Here now is Adam Walsh joins us live again this evening from Fort McMurray. Adam. Debbie, earlier in the week, we stopped by the Center of Hope. It's where people whose plans of prosperity fall through end up in Fort McMurray. For the staff, the goal is to get these people back on their feet. Colonel starts a new job as a cook next week. Tomorrow night, I'm featuring a housing update. How much does it cost to buy a house? What are the rents? And what's being done to address the housing issue here in Fort McMurray? How exactly is Keith Russell's latest gaffe being viewed? Debbie, latest gaffe is right. This isn't Keith Russell's first time putting his foot in his mouth. He was actually scolded twice by the premier this fall for his poor word choice. The house was 48 hours into the Muskrat Falls filibuster when Russell said this. Who, who was the one that would seek me out and give me the big sloppy wet kiss right in front of everybody, Mr. Speaker? That was the honorable member from Cartwright, Lance Aguilar. This close to Christmas, politicians are typically back in their districts, but not this year. Government is intent on passing enabling legislation for Muskrat Falls. We will not break over Christmas. We will continue through Christmas until this legislation passes. The government's majority means they won't have any problems passing the Muskrat enabling legislation, but thanks to parliamentary procedure and the opposition wanting to delay matters, it could mean a Muskrat Christmas for MHAs. Try and try as they might, the opposition could only delay the passing of bills 60 and 61 for so long. So Adam, bring us up to date. Debbie, government has faced this situation before. A woman killed, her accused murderer on probation for other crimes. People are once again asking, how could this happen? Meanwhile, Minister Charlene Johnson refused an interview request and referred the matter to the RNC. In a statement, Deputy Chief Bill Jane says this report and the video sent to high schools across the province are a different matter. Adam Walsh, CBC News, St. John's. A 74-year-old man from St. John's, Newfoundland has been found alive after spending a week lost in the woods. The CBC's Adam Walsh has that story for us. The phone hasn't stopped ringing since Chess Sweet Apple went missing one week ago. A St. John's mother says her kids racked up a $3,000 bill playing a game downloaded for free on an iPhone. Adam Walsh joins us with more on this. So, Adam, how did this happen? Well, St. John's mom, Paula Marner, took her kids, twin seven-year-old boys, on a trip to the UK. So she let them play an app she downloaded for free. What she didn't know about was something called in-app purchasing. Escorts from across Canada are flocking to Newfoundland and Labrador. Much has been said about the move from have-not to have economy here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And with wealth comes a lot of opportunity. One escort I interviewed told me that two years ago she was in competition with five traveling escorts coming here. That number has ballooned to 40. We wouldn't be doing this well if your husbands and boyfriends and friends weren't coming to see us. How well? That friend made $28,000 in three weeks here. She only worked three to four days a week. Newfoundland is now part of a national prostitution touring circuit. These women tour more than rock bands. Iris's friends came from Vancouver, but our investigation has found escorts who fly here from Calgary, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and more. And it goes both ways. Some of the a la carte choices don't involve protection. The risk is yours and the prices vary. The man behind this site is Norm Lush. Hi, Mr. Lush. We're with uh, my name is Adam Wallace. I'm with CBC Newfoundland and Labrador. I was wondering if we could ask you a few questions. Would you say you're in the prostitution business? Here and now is Adam Walsh broke that story. He's joining us live with a preview of his report. Adam, why does this bed bug problem continue? Jonathan, the simple answer: it's not being dealt with. Six weeks ago, when Justin Nurse and his fiance came home from a holiday. They found they had bed bugs, so they called an exterminator, but the bed bugs kept appearing. Here now is Adam Walsh joins us with the skin crawling details. So Adam, why isn't anything being done? Debbie, it's because the city, the landlord and the province refuse to do anything. Meanwhile, bed bugs are crawling through row houses here in downtown St. John's, all because of a system that's broken. They may be small, but if you get them, they quickly become a big problem. The report includes testimony from more than 100 key informants, teachers, outreach workers, healthcare providers, police, the Justice Department, and those who were sexually exploited. As far as research into sexual exploitation goes, this was a big piece of work. In fact, there's been nothing like it. 
It is really vital, critical evidence that's in here about something that's happening in our province that nobody's talking about. We managed to get a copy of the report, not from the government or from its authors, but through our own digging. And it paints a bleak picture of young people at risk.